think that starting such an organization as this was a matter of both time and opportunity, as well as the stimulus of realizing this huge problem. I was at a point in my career where I could take early retirement. The same year, all of the information on this technique of uh, VIA, which is visual inspection with acetic acid, otherwise known as vinegar, came out in the journals. They studied hundreds of thousands of women in four continents and had very good success with this very easy see and treat technique. I remember sitting in my office doing a colposcopy, which was the third visit for this woman, and thinking, you know, I could have done this on her first visit, and I could put every piece of equipment in this room in a suitcase or two. It could go anywhere with me. And from that was born the idea of, let's take docs to these countries to train and show these people this technique, then we can give them the equipment and they'll have a self-sustaining system. Pink goes every six months for at least three visits, usually four. So that over a period of a year and a half to two years, we are setting up their system, then we ask them to practice that technique. Here are the kinds of tests that are possible. The first thing we do is a general lecture, and we completely go over what cervical cancer is, why it's such a problem, and what this technique is that we use of examining the woman using a vinegar wash. And in just a few minutes, you can see the areas on the cervix that have dysplasia, which is the precursor to cancer. And you can see how severe it is and how far it's progressed uh, just by inspection. We are teaching them not only cervical cancer screening, but breast cancer screening and pelvic examination so that they can pick up tumors or ovarian problems. At first, when we do treatments, they observe. And we have them observe two or three treatments with us explaining everything, including how to utilize the equipment, how to clean the equipment, how to store the equipment. Because one of the biggest breakdowns uh, is that this is not taught, and then once people have gone away, it's used incorrectly, breaks, and that's the end of the equipment, and also the treatment. From then on, we are the observer. Our clients are the doctors and nurses, and they treat their patients. They do the examinations, and we observe with them and instruct them as we uh, observe the cervix of the woman in what it is we're seeing and why it's abnormal and what the next step would be in treating them. And the other thing we do is record keeping. In many of these countries there is no official record and what the woman has from when she was seen before is a piece of paper or a little book that somebody has scribbled a diagnosis in. So it's not kept in the hospital such as we have here. And so we encourage a record keeping system and a follow up system. We go to places mostly at their invitation. And that's what happened in El Salvador we actually trained a woman in Nicaragua who had been a doctor in the public health system in El Salvador. And she said, I know of this area that would love to have you. Please call them. So we discovered Provida, which is a wonderful organization in El Salvador. Their doctors just were dying to get this because their patients were dying. We trained all seven of their doctors who go out to seven central sites that then serve like 20 villages apiece in areas across El Salvador. I think in El Salvador particularly, we've begun to change the standard of care for women in a number of areas. The accomplishment of that is just amazing for me. 
I never go on a trip that it doesn't energize me to go back. Women are so grateful. I had one woman there who came up to me and gave me this big hug and told me, they told me I was too poor to get treatment, and now you've saved my life. I have small children, now I can raise them. Quiero mirarme a tiempo. Tengo mucho miedo porque miré a alguien como sufría. Murió una vecina, sufrió mucho, sangraba mucho. No se miró a tiempo. Por no mirarse a tiempo, ella sangraba y decía que prefería morir antes que soportar ese dolor. Yo sufrí mucho porque tenía en mente, pensé lo peor, tenía mucho miedo. Pero ya ahorita ya. Linda Lorena Sosa. Esta Linda Sosa, Lorena Sosa. We often have large number of women waiting, and because we're teaching, the day is very slow, an exam is long, and the women may have to wait for a long time. They often have their children with them also. And it may be six or seven hours of waiting before they get seen. Always the spirit amongst the women waiting is one of patience and endurance. And it's impressive, I think, to any of us who work with them. Their willingness to do that, I think, comes in part from living in a culture where Life is unpredictable. You don't know that morning if you're going to be able to get uh, on the road to come to the clinic. You don't know if there's going to be electricity, if there'll be water to wash your clothes. I think also it comes from desperation. The women have few opportunities for access to care, and that desperation makes them wait long periods of time. We are almost entirely relying on volunteers. And volunteers pay to work with us. So they pay their uh, airfare, they pay their ground costs, they take time off from work, so they're using their vacation time. In every way, they have paid to come and work like dogs for a couple of weeks. It's amazing to me that they will do that. The thing that we ask the volunteers on a trip with us is a willingness to do everything. So we may have a gynecologist who's very skilled who decides that the most important thing this particular day is to teach the nurses how to assist at a procedure. Non-medical volunteers are very important to us and do a variety of things. We need somebody to do computer data entry. Non-medical volunteers may be involved in counseling, interviewing patients, translating, the restocking of rooms, babysitting, lifting everyone's spirit by offering a snack in the middle of the day. We don't have large amounts of money to spend, so we're very careful about how we spend it. The money that comes into Pink goes directly to support the programs that we're running. The medical sustainability model that PINK uses, it's important because it is not a Band-Aid and because it is empowering and enabling medical professionals to continue this work in the absence of PINK. And I love that. I love that because it is not just giving a man a fish and feeding him for a day, it's teaching him to fish so that he can be fed every day. So much aid work and so much volunteer work isn't sustainable in that way. It is going in, doing something for a couple weeks, and that's the experience I had. I went in for a couple weeks, but I'm supporting an organization that doesn't just go in for a couple weeks. It goes back every six months until the clinic, the physicians, are able to do it on their own. Thank you. So it's empowering. It's an empowerment model. And what could be better than empowering other people to take control of healthcare in their own nation? I think that all of you have well earned your certificates of uh, 
qualification to perform EVA, Brioterapia, and Asatermica Condi. <laughs> Roberto Perez. I started to put uh, MD con in America. Pero necesite aquí con Gero. Salió. Whoops.